B.G. emerged as one of the pioneering rap artists signed to Cash Money Records. While he later ventured beyond the label to carve his unique trajectory in the rap industry, his enduring connection to Cash Money persists. It was with Cash Money that he experienced his peak success, highlighted by the groundbreaking 1999 track, Bling Bling. Before he let the world know that Cash Money was an army, better yet the Navy, he was Lil Doogie, Cash Money's tiny tyke, and half of the duo the BGs, or Baby Gangstas. Together with his partner, Lil Wayne, going by the moniker Baby D, who at the time was only 12 years old, they recorded a 1995 Cash Money EP titled True Story. The duo unabashedly rapped about smoking Boku spliffs and clocking much, much dollars. Legend has it that Wayne's mom pulled him from the project after hearing the profanity. Consequently, the album, and the name associated with it, transitioned into the hands of Doogie, now known as BG. Despite his mother resisting, Lil Wayne managed to record the album together with 14-year-old BG. In the early recordings, Lil Wayne's voice portrayed a pre-adolescent navigating the streets with lyrics reflecting his young perspective. In stark contrast, BG exuded a seasoned street demeanor, both in his vocal delivery and appearance. Even at the age of 14, BG demonstrated a mastery of storytelling, vividly depicting the harsh realities of life in the 13th Ward of New Orleans, specifically around Valence and Magnolia. Shortly after recording his debut, Dorsey faced legal troubles as a juvenile, charged with possession of a firearm, crack, and marijuana. Despite being found guilty on all counts, he was fortunate to receive probation initially. However, a violation led to a two-month incarceration. Returning home, he was devastated by the loss of his best friend. Things took a darker turn when he was arrested for possessing 30 Valiums and 2 ounces of weed. This time, a more extended jail term awaited him. As BG's initial three-year sentence got reduced to eight months, his newfound freedom marked a turning point. Determined to straighten out his life, he grappled with heroin addiction for years. Yet, committing himself to music wholeheartedly, he entered a phase of prolific creativity, a level of output he hadn't matched since. In 1996, Cash Money recognized the talent of the maturing teen and decided he would be a solo artist, giving him the BG moniker as Baby D became Lil Wayne. The year saw the release of BG's debut album Chopper City, an album regarded as one of the hardest gangster rap albums of all time. Although Chopper City was credited to the BG's, it was in reality even more of a Dorsey solo record. One of the recurring themes of the album was BG's use of heroin, better known as dope or furl. While BG's rapping prowess was undoubtedly impressive on Chopper City, a significant portion of the album's success can be attributed to the creative genius of producer Manny Fresh. At that time, Manny Fresh played a crucial role in steering cash money away from its earlier bounce music mold. He achieved this by crafting intricate, diverse, and electronically rich backdrops that breathed new life into old-school electro, perfectly aligning with the post-gangsta era. Manny Fresh had previously employed this innovative direction on UNLV's Uptown 4 Life, which enjoyed substantial regional success. Chopper City continued to push the boundaries of this fresh sound, solidifying Cash Money's reputation in the process. Despite facing distribution challenges, the album managed to sell an impressive 100,000 copies locally, attesting to its enduring impact within the city. By 1997, the entire original Cash Money roster was gone except for BG and the Big Timers. The label's Cash Cows, BG and Manny Fresh were both given busy work schedules. Lil Wayne wasn't active as much as he was recovering from a self-inflicted gunshot wound after a suicide attempt. Following the release of It's All On You in 1997 on Cash Money, a mere four months later, BG delivered It's All On You, Volume 2, in the same year. Impressively, both albums proved to be unexpectedly robust, showcasing BG's consistency and musical prowess. 
It's all on you, Vol. 1, along with newly signed artist Juvenile's Soldier Rags later on, helped land cash money the monumental deal with Universal Records that led to their commercial success. The same year when It's All On You album was released, the Hot Boys were formed, mainly to capitalize on the fame of BG and newly signed Juvenile whilst introducing a just-returned Lil Wayne and another new signee, Young Turk. The original incarnation of the Hot Boys was comprised of BG, Juvenile, Lil Wayne, and rapper Bulletproof, a nephew of Baby and Slim. However, due to Bulletproof's reputation as a troublemaker and a hothead, the decision was made to insert Turk, who originally signed with Cash Money to do bounce music, into the group as the last and final member of the quartet. Rather than serving as a pivotal advancement for the 17-year-old, the album marked a period when BG's struggle with heroin addiction intensified. This darker phase of his life was evident in the chorus of the song I Be Thinking. He rapped, I be loaded, thinking of Range Rovers. Maybe I could get a Range Rover if I stay my sober, I be loaded, thinking of condos. Now, maybe I could get a condo if I keep my nose closed. Within the Hot Boys group, BG and Juvenile stood out as the premier MCs, and the debate over who was the better artist often boiled down to personal preference. Juvenile's charismatic personality and dynamic sound made him leap out of television screens and stereos, capturing attention with his lively presence. On the other hand, BG's distinctive style, characterized by a drunken drawl and unorthodox flow, added a unique and unconventional dimension to the mix. Following Cash Money's significant deal with Universal, BG's Chopper City in the Ghetto emerged as a masterful blend of accessibility and inventiveness. With the advantage of Cash Money's newfound national distribution through Universal, the album produced hits like The Ubiquitous, Cash Money is an Army, and the even more prominent Bling Bling, dominating the airwaves. While Cash Money was at the top of the rap game, the heroin had its artists at their lowest. BG and Turk consistently missed shows and appearances, getting so high that they often couldn't even make it to video shoots. Baby and Slim's constant attempts to wean the members off of the drug failed. In 2000, BG released what would prove to be his final album with cash money, Checkmate. He also felt that he was being cheated out of his share of the royalties on some of the label's biggest successes. In early 2001, BG became one of the many artists to leave Cash Money in a second wave of departures, ultimately followed by Turk, Juvenile, and Manny Fresh. As a free agent, BG wasted no time and took steps to revitalize his career. He enrolled in a drug treatment program in Minnesota, addressing personal challenges. Concurrently, he established his own label, Chopper City Records, and secured a deal with Cock Records. Following his treatment, he relocated to Detroit, where he had family and a support network, signaling a new chapter in both his personal and professional life. Having founded Chopper City Records in 2002, BG openly addressed his conflicts with Baby and Lil Wayne on the 2003 album Live in Legend. This candid expression continued on his 2004 release, Life After Cash Money. Unfortunately, despite his efforts, the latter album fell short of replicating the success he had experienced with earlier releases. BG experienced a period of temporary sobriety and marked his return with The Heart of the Streets Volume 1 in 2005. While the album achieved underground success and even cracked the Billboard Top 10, it fell short in terms of substantial sales. The sequel, The Heart of the Streets, Volume 2, I Am What I Am, released in 2006, yielded similar results. For a hiatus from the national spotlight, BG re-emerged in 2009 with Too Hood to Be Hollywood, a project that saw a reunion with Juvenile, Lil Wayne, and producer Manny Fresh. Despite releasing several mixtapes, BG encountered legal troubles, and in 2009 when he was arrested in New Orleans with weapons and drugs. In 2012, he faced a significant legal setback as he was sentenced to 14 years in federal prison. 
The charges included possession of firearms and allegations of witness tampering. It was alleged that police recovered three firearms in addition to the car being stolen from a rental car parking lot. BG's obstruction of justice charge stemmed from him urging one of his two associates to falsely claim ownership of the weapon, which the rapper later confessed to. Prosecutors made it known that BG was not cooperating and was maintaining a no-snitch stance. He got out of prison in September 2023 after serving 11 years for gun possession and was immediately greeted by Birdman, sparking talk of a cash money reunion. Before BG regained his freedom, Gucci Man pledged support to the rap veteran by proclaiming he had a $1 million record deal on the table to bring to sign him to his 1017 label. My 1017 family helped me welcome home the living legend BG, Gucci wrote on X, formerly Twitter, in 2022, following rumors that BG had been released from prison, which were later debunked. Following his eventual release in 2023, Birdman sought to fend off the competition by declaring that BG would be rejoining his former home, Cash Money Records. In January 2024, former Hot Boys rapper BG stirred up the hip-hop community by dissing his former Hot Boys group member Lil Wayne. BG released a verse, taking a direct shot at Lil Wayne with the lines, a wheezy touring but he a bitch and it's showing. Fans were left perplexed and disheartened by BG's unexpected criticism of Lil Wayne, given the history and camaraderie between the two artists during their Hot Boys days. BG later came forward to offer an explanation for his controversial move. In a live-streamed video, BG addressed the diss aimed at Lil Wayne, stating, Brothers fight sometimes. The rapper seemed to acknowledge that conflicts can emerge even among close friends and collaborators, emphasizing the intricate nature of relationships within the music industry. This statement suggested that, like any close relationship, disagreements and tensions can surface between artists, highlighting the complexities inherent in the dynamic world of music.